Welcome to Game Crunch, your weekly video game podcast. My name is Mike Anastasia. With me today, we have Nick. Hello. I'm Brandon. Yo. We're here to talk about games and things. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Brandon's deceased. So, yep. You got that. It goes for sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Then that's it. That's all the news. You guys ready to get into it? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll spare Brandon right away. Nick, yeah. what's, what Kirby are you playing? Uh,. I, so you know how I like I would play live alive while I'm away. Just kidding. I played Kirby, um, <laughs> Forgotten Lands, um, and I like basically finished it. I rolled credits. So however you oh, okay. consider finish, it. I'm doing that like weird after part right now. Yeah, I'm not sure how important that is to the story, but that's where I'm at. But I did finish it. I roll. I consider rolling credits beating the game. So yeah, um, no, that's that's for where I do it too. Yeah, doesn't I, necessarily mean I'm going to stop playing there, but at least that's where I consider it being. Yeah, that's where I consider it canonically. I, I have the story bits. If you were like, "Hey, remember this level?" Yep, I do because I played it. No. Um, I I understand what you're saying about the last copy ability at the end being batshit fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, it was hilarious. I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, but all in all, I really like the game. Um, I thought it was one of the more polished games that I've played on the Switch to date. Um. Felt oh, yeah. like for what it was was the like completely correct length. Like it didn't feel too too short, but it also didn't feel like it overstayed its welcome at all. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't left wanting more, mostly because there's a bunch of shit you can still do. Um, besides like exploring the Kirby Town and doing all the stuff in there, uh, you have the after part. Like I said, that I'm going through right this moment. Um, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like I, I feel like that game is just it's got a nice. Like you know, bit from start to credits, yeah. And then, like, if there's more that you want to do, like the Waddle D collecting, or like you said, this post game stuff, like, there's enough to keep you busy for a bit. Oh, yeah, especially because, like, I didn't collect all of the Waddle D's to beat the game. If I really, really enjoyed playing the game to its fullest extent, I'll go back and try and find the rest of the Waddle D's. But, um, I am, I am content, I am, I am not. Disappointed in this game at one bit. I thought it was very, very good. Um, I haven't tried any of the two-player stuff yet, which I do plan on doing. Um, but no, all in all, very good. I loved it. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'm more excited though for tomorrow because I do really, really want to play. Uh, what's the what's Dream Buffet? Oh That's yeah, coming, it's coming out? out this week. I think yeah. it comes out on Friday, doesn't it? No, it comes out uh, tomorrow. Oh, I thought it was the 19th for some reason. Nope. 17th. So that's actually, I originally thought that was going to be a free-to-play game. It's not. It's a, like, I think it's like a $20 title. Yeah, I mean. that sounds about right. Yeah. So um, I do really want to play that as well because that looks very fun. And I've been it seeing, looks interesting. like, random snippets of it. So I'm, yeah, I'm curious to see what the staying power is of it, but, you know. I'll listen to what you have to say next week and make a decision there. Yeah. I guess. I do have a feeling that it's one of those games that might, like, in six months pop up on the NSO uh, expansion pass. What do you think? I I have a, an inkling of that only because, like, it seems like it's probably around the same value as the Animal Crossing DLC and, like, the Splatoon DLC. Mm-hmm. So it just feels like it fits in correctly with all of that. Whether or not that's going to happen, I don't know. It just, to me, just seems like a natural place for that to fall. So yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but so that's been really cool. But I, like I said last week, I was away at uh, Super Smash Con in Virginia. Tell um, us all about how Steve changed the world. Yo, fucking! If you were on Twitter on Sunday, yes, yeah, Sunday night, like you follow anything in like Nintendo or the Smash community, shit was blowing up. Um, mostly because people were pissed off that Steve won. Uh, the, the person who got first place was was a Steve player. Um, the Steve player also knocked out the person who's considered to be the number one ultimate player in the world, uh, MK Leo. Uh, he actually got fifth, which he usually gets first at these tournaments. Um, there's like been arguments back and forth whether or not he should be banned. I don't think he should be banned, but you know whether or not that ever happens i don't know people keep saying like what if we do this maybe nintendo will like fix him i'm like you guys don't know nintendo do you 
Yeah, Sakurai is done with this yeah. game. He doesn't care anymore. Like, you, you're telling me that company who openly was like, uh, I'll say Sakurai, who represents Nintendo, was openly like, yeah, this isn't a competitive game. You think yeah. banning him from competitive tournaments, a single character that, honestly, Sakurai could probably give a fuck about, is going to be like, oh, guys, we got to go back into the into the war room and really fix this guy. But it ain't going to happen. Was he so. always this bad, or is it just just now coming to light? So I think it's more of... He, he does need some things that need to be, be nerfed. Mm-hmm. Um, some of his attacks are very easy to land. Um, some of them give too much of a percentage on hit. Mm-hmm. Um, but at this point, it's he's just doing so well in tournaments because he's one of the characters that came out during the pandemic, um, along with the rest of the DLC for the second wave. And basically... Nobody has any real experience fighting against him. Um, well, that's what I figured maybe the other possibility was. Like, yeah. if it's just more of a matter of, like, hey, this guy snuck in as a really good, you know, Steve player, but nobody's really had to deal with him on a competitive level. Well, so they're not really sure how to address him. That That's the thing, is, like, you got to understand, too, like, with some of these other characters, there's been years of, like, character data that yeah. was both in person and, and whatnot, but, like, it's just, it's funny, like, whenever there's a character that people don't understand how to fight, they're like, automatically, oh, we gotta ban him. And then, like, in six months, it'll go away. Um, what's funny, though, is, too, is, like, they'll try to bring up, like, well, the, like, the kid who won, like, well, where was he pre-pandemic? And they're like, well, one, he was 14. Uh, two, Steve wasn't out yet. So, he didn't have any results pre-pandemic because, well, he didn't play, and he also didn't have Steve, who didn't come out until, what, like, six months ago or so? Maybe a year? I, I forget how long ago he came out. Um, I don't even know either. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. So, like, I don't know, it's just funny because, like, the Smash community will get up in an uproar and just, like, just kind of complain about shit for a little bit, and then somebody figures out how to beat said person, and then it's like, okay, never mind, we're good actually. So it's just, it's funny to see that kind of happen in real time over and over and over again, because it's like this kind of shit's been happening since they announced Hero for the game. And it's just like, until somebody figures out how to stop the big meanie block man, people are just going to bitch about it until they actually put the time in to learn how to fight it. And then they'll be like, oh wait, never mind. I know how to counter everything they're trying to do, or most things they're trying to do. Because he is beatable. There are Steves who are in bracket who lost. Um, and then I rose the point too that, you know, I could pick up Steve and learn how to play him and I still wouldn't three O the greatest player in the world. That's just not happening. Like there's yeah. there's a specific skill set that the person who did that has that he was able to do that. So it's just, it's funny. But for the most part, the actual convention itself was was very fun. Um saw a lot of cool vendors, bought some stuff. Bought some Pokemon cards, because I always <laughs> end up going to the Pokemon card vendors and buying something before I leave. I did buy... They had a stand that was selling CGC-graded cards, and I've never had a CGC-graded anything. Um, and on the last day of the con, they put every card that they had was on sale. So I was looking at this graded Japanese Snorlax card for my girlfriend. They were charging 75 bucks for it, and I was like... Mm. I, I love her, and I would buy stuff like that for her, but it's also, like, a huge ripoff. Um, yeah. The last day of the con, they were running one card, one graded card for $35, or two for 60 So I ended up getting two cards for 60 bucks, $15 less than what I was originally going to pay for one, and I got myself one and got hers, and basically paid 30 for both. So it's a much better deal. Oh, yeah, much, much better deal. Um, there's a lot of controller uh, stands selling, like, customized controllers and whatnot, buttons, artwork. Um, the big thing this year seemed to be Spy X Family, the anime. Um, they have a lot, a lot of artwork from them. Um, but overall, really, really fun time. It was cool to be back. I haven't, they haven't had a Smash Con since 2019. Um, so it, was, it felt really good to get back and, uh, you know, just kind of play competitively, like, at a super major like that again. So a lot of fun. But uh but yeah, I got home Sunday because I could not stand sleeping on those hotel beds anymore. They were fucking awful. <laughs> and uh I like I'm to the point where now whenever I go to a hotel, like, do I just bring a gel mattress pad with me? 
Is that just like? Is that something that you have to do when you when you turn thirty? You just gotta start bringing gel mattress pads with you to hotels. I don't know. No, some of the hotels I have have been at have like the most luxurious. Well, this was like, a Hilton. Mattresses. This was a Hilton. It's, I was gonna say it's usually the Hiltons that have really nice mattresses. Oh no, we so me and my girlfriend woke up the next day. She we had to go to Walmart and buy her like icy hot patches. <laughs> and like I was basically like waking up like a crinkle cut fry every day. It was yeah, not no, very good. Not good. No. But uh yeah, all in all, very good time. So I will be back again next year if they decide to do it, which they are I know they're gonna do it next year. I will definitely be back next year. But uh but yeah. Um that's mostly what I've been up to. I was playing a lot of Smash while I was there. So, oh I'm sure. Um it's surprisingly enough. Now you're you're in the medical field, um, so while I appreciate and understand mask mandates and wearing masks and stuff like that, and I'm never one to shy away from like if so, if somebody asks like, "Hey, wear a mask while you're in here," I'll be like, "All right, yeah, man, cool, no problem," because I'm an adult. Um, if I can smell somebody's body odor through a mask. <laughs> Is it safe to say that the COVID, the bad, bad COVID virus can go all up in my, my nasal tracts? Well, I mean, the mask doesn't necessarily stop COVID. Okay. It depends. It can. He's right. It doesn't. It, and sometimes it does not. That's my <laughs> thing. Like, if I'm smelling your sweaty, poopy butt, I'm oh, definitely God. not stopping any sort of virus from getting all up in my nose holes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with COVID, too, like... They'll expect the mask more to, like, stop it on the way out as opposed to stop it from getting in. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's more useful if the person who has it is wearing it as opposed to, That's fair. like, if you don't yeah. have it. And maybe the person who has it. it shouldn't actually fucking be out and maybe, about. Maybe the person who had it couldn't smell that they stunk. <laughs> right? They lost their and sense that of would smell maybe be and like, taste? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would maybe be the best way to know who I'm around that might have the the COVID in them, because oh. if they can't smell, if they can't smell the funky baseline oh. that they're producing, <laughs> did you say the funky baseline? Yes. <laughs> because if you've ever been, hmm. if you've ever been, hmm. I, I'm pretty sure both of you here have been to some sort of convention <laughs> at one point or another. Holy shit, Mike! I doubt you've been to an anime convention. But I also yeah. wouldn't hold out on your morbid curiosity. <laughs> if you, like, rolled up somewhere, you're like, let's see what these fucking weaves are doing. Um, it's, like, it can be, it's a funk fest. It's really bad. Like, but prior to COVID, I would tell everybody, do not mouth breathe ever at a con. Because you will taste another human being's funk. Um, <laughs> but definitely now... I, I would more so recommend getting like maybe a mask with a charcoal filter in it, mm -hmm. just so you can filter out the smells of the people around you. But that might be a good litmus test to see who around you has the virus. If they're like they come in, they're just stinky. You might not <laughs> smell the stinky on them. But uh, yeah, I'll save you. But I mean, you yeah. Can try. So. But yeah. So all in all, like I said, very very fun time. Um, it was it was cool. Very good. So, so did you buy anything other than the Pokemon cards? Uh, I did buy a controller shell for my GameCube controller. Um, I bought like I had like the Japanese Wave on it, um, and had that installed. Um, I bought usually when I go to things like these, I tend to buy more artwork than anything. Um, pro tip: if you go to any sort of convention and there's like video games or like video game paraphernalia on sale. Unless you know you're getting a good deal, do not buy said video game or video game paraphernalia because most of the time it's extremely overpriced. Um, so I bought a lot of like pins. So there was this one stand that was selling like D and D pins, um, and one they had like a corgi holding a D twenty and a black lab holding a D twenty. I was like, hey, I have both of those dogs, so I bought um, those pins. Um, Bought some other like Pokemon style pins. Uh, there was a stand that sold tokens for their stacks, and when I say stacks, I mean like five machine tall stacks of Gachapon machines. So mm -hmm. I, I spent some money and got some of those tokens and got some Gachapon stuff, which was really cool. Um, 
but yeah, so just little trinkets and artwork here and there, but nothing like nothing huge, huge. So okay, yeah, that's all I've pretty much been up to. So mm. I will pass the ball. Yeah, I'll I'll speak for a second. Okay, so I played Cult of the Lamb. Some you wanted to know about this game. You said you you yeah, knew you yeah. could uh, depend on me to tell you about this game. Yeah, because I trust your opinions on video games. Awesome. Uh, it's really really good. <laughs> um, let me start by kind of explaining what you got to work with. So essentially, the way this game works is it's part like base building and management game and part um a game similar to something like Hades or Binding of Isaac or you know those sort of roguelike games where you go do a run after you've done said run you bring back the items that you've gotten or what have you and then you use those to help build up your empire area that sort of deal um mm-hmm. And that's kind of what happens here, except um, you you die at the beginning of this game and you start a cult because the like demon monster, old god, whatever the hell it was, um, it wants you to start a cult and it's and it's a like name, basically. So then um, you go and hunt down the people who put you to the blade and as you're hunting down the different people that worship the old gods um, that aren't your god, um, you fight them as of like little bosses, like in little rooms like you would in Binding of Isaac or in Hades. And in the after you defeat them, you can choose to uh, bring them into your cult and into your cult. And different people will have... Um, different aspects to themselves so essentially some will be better for praising and worshiping some will be better for working some will be better for doing murderous tasks that you don't want to do Uh uh-huh so um yeah uh or like getting other people to like listen to you and that sort of thing um so my friend played this And he played it with the Twitch integration, which made it a lot more interesting, in my opinion, because anyone that was a viewer could become a cult follower. Uh, So, like, they would they would um, be able to, like, cheer, but not with, like, real money. You could set it to be you cheer through using real money and actually give money to the cult in real life and everything. But we set it so it was just channel points. And, um... When you donate enough channel points, then your cult like was able to like level up some and that sort of thing. And your character that you had created from watching them stream it, um, like went up higher in the cult and that sort of deal. And they leveled up and whatnot. It's very interesting and fun. There's lots of really really weird moments. Um, like for instance, when we first started. Like when I first started playing, one of the um, one of the people that was in my cult was like, you know, it would be funny if you made this guy eat shit. So uh, so clean up some of the shit that the other animals around here have left lying around that's making people sick and then cook it into a stew and force this person to eat it. And you could like you could you could be like, all right, cool. I'm going to do that. You know, just as like a, a prank, just just to prove that you have power over them that sort of thing it's it was really weird but it was it was still like very much like okay this is definitely like a very cultish thing to do <laughs> and um it was just um it was really it felt not na- like normal like like a normal roguelike kind of game does like your hades games uh, like your games like binding of isaac like your dead cells, like your this, that, and the other. It felt like the same kind of progression system where you go out, you get stuff, you bring it back to base, you use that to build your base up and build your characters up. But it also had a lot of other stuff, like um, a lot of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like social aspects to it, where um, you would have to like socialize with your followers and keep them happy. 
so that they wouldn't um, revolt, essentially. And then, like, as your followers get older, you can choose to, like, sacrifice them to your god, or you can um, you can murder them, or you can let them die of old age. And there's just a whole bunch of really weird things to the game itself. And it's a lot of fun. It's very good. Definitely worth playing. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, And I, because I don't want to really spoil that much more. But I will say this. This next game I'm going to talk about now, which is uh, Roller Drome. This game is awesome. Uh, like, incredibly awesome. Awesome. But Sony is not. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Did uh, Sony it, make it? Let me finish. Well, as you so, may I know, I don't know anything about this game. I know, and you'll find out soon. Okay. Um, as you may know, if you have um, well, I guess Mike does know this, but if you have a uh, PS Premium. This was one of the trials that they were offering, one of the new trials for games that they were offering. Um, the trial is listed as being like an hour long or so, that sort of thing. So you can you can get a feel for the game because it's an arcade game. So yeah, an hour long, not that bad. Uh, you start it up and it only gives you 35 minutes from the get go. So the the listing that they have for the time for the trial isn't even true. And then while you're playing it, which I was playing it and timing at the same time, it didn't even give me the 35 minutes it was saying it was giving me. So um, I feel personally, after trying the trials for a single time, that the trial system for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation Plus Premium is completely fucking broken. It just it just doesn't work the way that they they say it does at all. Uh, And it's a super ripoff like it is a big ripoff um because it also seems like and i'm not 100 percent sure i looked in other places to make sure it wasn't like an issue that just i was having everyone else was having the same thing they they only got 35 minutes to play the, the game in its entirety and it didn't even give them that um and then on top of that other people that had tried different trials had said that their trials didn't start with the amount of time that they said they would start with either so it's it's a little bit of a mess right now. So if anyone, which you shouldn't in the first place, if anyone was going to get premium because you're interested in like the five hour trials, the one hour trials, the two hour trials, first of all, that's really stupid and you shouldn't be. Um, but uh, second of all, it just doesn't work. So there's no point. It's kind of a rip off if that that aspect of premium should just be X'd out and should be part of the entire thing because for one it doesn't even work and for two it's really stupid so so there's that now let's talk about something that's not really stupid and that's roller <laughs> roller drum roller drum's really fucking good um this game is a combination of tony hawk and like twisted metal somewhat as well as things like Jet Set Radio and stuff like that, all combined into one. And it's incredibly good. The music's insanely well done. It sounds like futuristic and weird, and it fits the game really, really well. Um, The gameplay is essentially you're playing as a roller doobry girl who in the year 2030... Um, there are blood sports, which are done via roller derby to like, you know, clear, uh, debts and this, that, and the other, you know, it's, it's post-apocalyptic, not really post-apocalyptic, but you know, it's got that feel of it. It's got that like dystopian thing where it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll wipe your debt if you don't fucking die in this game show. And, uh, it's really neat. It's really fun and interesting. Um, the controls are a little bit weird because I, when I first started trying it, I thought I'd have to hold like forward on the thumbstick at all times, but you only have to like press it once to do like a push off and that sort of thing, and like press it again like whenever you need to get like more speed and that sort of thing. And um, that that was really messing me up because if you're holding forward the whole time then when you do like a jump, you don't do like a jump off the ramp. You just do a jump in the air and that sort of thing. So you can't do tricks correctly if you if you're 
playing it that way. So you have to realize I only need to press the thumbstick like once or twice. I don't need to hold my thumb on the thumbstick and hold forward the whole time because it just doesn't matter. Uh, otherwise, you kind of like mess up all your tricks and everything the whole time. And um, your the point of the game is to like destroy all the enemies that are on the roller derby field as fast as possible. Um, and then like you know while doing tricks and looking as cool as you humanly can while doing so. There's like a dodge button so you can land like perfect dodges. And the way you like reload your guns is through doing tricks. So you don't reload your guns with an actual dedicated reload button. You just do badass tricks and it allows you to reload your guns at the same time. So you look even cooler because you're like flipping through the air and like grabbing your foot and everything or doing like a fucking 900 but at the same time you're also reloading a shotgun it's really neat and it's a lot of fun this game is very very good like very very good and i do highly recommend checking it out uh at some point if you like games like that i would say i do i think you would like it alone just for the music like this music seems like something to be super up your alley nick is it like, would you compare the music to kind of like Jet Grind Radio, Jet Set Radio? No, or would you absolutely say not. So like... It is very experimental. Okay, cool. That's fine. To the point where, like, I, I think the person that did all the music did it entirely, like, using old hardware on analog and everything. Okay. And, um, like, there's a, there's a video that he put up of it. it it's, hold on. If you want to check it out, you can like, give your thoughts on this. I'll just put it yeah. in the, the general chat. So we got here. The music is like incredible. Oh, hold on. You all die. Hold on. Yeah. Electric Dragon. Okay. No, it's very good. Not what yeah, I was this... expecting, but very good. Yeah, the music's incredibly good. I think he describes it as like a '70s synth wave, which doesn't exist. So he made it himself. Listen, I appreciate that. <laughs> it's like this doesn't exist now it does <laughs> nice old school feel to it oh yeah that's it that's all I got to say it's a great game it's a lot of fun it's got really cool gunplay it's got really cool trick system um, and the music's awesome I really want to play more of this but their trial was really it bit me in the ass and it made me kind of upset but that's okay because I actually have money that's been sitting in my Steam account for a while, and uh, well, I, I found something to spend it on. So there we go. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. I mean, I guess the only thing I have to talk about this week is Xenoblade Three. Mm-hmm. Now that I've had much more time to spend with it, I can give much more thoughts on it. Uh, I'm wondering where yeah. I want to start. Um, let's see. So at least where I am right now, I've not finished the main story yet, but I'm at like that point in any RPG where it's. The the point in the RPG where it's like, go here if you want to go to the final boss. You know, at that point. So, I can basically finish it at any time at this point. But I've just been going around and going through and doing some side quests and stuff. Uh, I don't feel like this game has the overwhelming amount of side quests that the last couple Xenoblades have had. Which is good, at least for me. Okay. But it, that's a lot because it's at least the way it feels is they weeded out a lot of like the dumb dumb side quests that are in rpgs it'll be like you run into someone and they're like i want a chocolate pudding and then they'll be like side quests go get a chocolate pudding and then chocolate pudding will be on like 10 continents away and guarded by like some evil demon boss no they don't really have anything like that like it's just most of the side quests that are here like they all tend to be related to the story somehow so i feel like there's always a bit more payoff um because this game, too, story-wise, it's definitely more character-driven, I feel like, than the other games. Like, it's really, they want to go into, like, the backgrounds of these characters and kind of explore, like, why they are the way they are and how they got to where they are. Uh, so I think that you get a lot of better payoffs with those kind of things, okay. which is nice. Um, so, Brandon, I can tell you now, yeah. definitively, yeah. this game is definitely a direct sequel to Xenoblade 1 and 2. Okay. Separately, together, yes. Mm-hmm. So is it a multiverse sort of thing, like I said before? 
how do I explain it? So this is kind of like I guess spoilers for Xenoblade Two. Maybe All right. but it's not really like spoilers. It's it's so the way that Xenoblade treats it the other games, and this one especially, is you do not need to play the other games to appreciate this game. Okay. Um, and it was the same thing with Xenoblade 2. Like, you do not need to play Xenoblade 1 to appreciate Xenoblade 2. But if you did play it, there are things that you will appreciate more because of it. And it goes the same thing with Xenoblade 3. Like, do you need to have played Xenoblade 1 and 2 to enjoy Xenoblade 3? No, you don't. Uh, but one of the points that was brought up in... Well, I mean, I guess this is actually probably more of a spoiler for Xenoblade 1, if anything. Do you remember how batshit insane like the end of that game was? Not particularly. It's been a while. Okay, so the premise of Xenoblade 1 is, remember, you're on those two, like, giant, the the Mechanus and the Bionis. Mm -hmm. The Bionic, like, robot, and then the mechanical robot, and they're fighting each other. And then they get frozen in time, and they turn into continents, and people live on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then they're at war with each other. So, okay, so that's where the start of that game is, but it's like, where did they come from? Well, it's because some asshole on Earth decided to do a science experiment that kind of reset Earth and cast it off into this weird thing, and it created an alternate dimension Mm -hmm. as well. So there's two different dimensions. The dimension of Xenoblade 1, which was this alternate Mechanus Bionis one, and then Mm -hmm. Xenoblade 2, which had these, like, the flying little... um, I forget what they called them, but they're, like, big flying things mechanical okay. things like the the bias and the cosmos was okay so they're separate um and so so yes there's it's not really multiverse it's just there's two dimensions okay um but they were separate they were created separately from the events of that asshole doing the science experiment in the first be prior to the events of the first game okay Does that make sense? sort of okay that's that's really that. That's it. No, no, I got it. 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 Ugh. Well, no, I was saying that's that's really it for the, like the backstory part. Okay. Of this thing. okay and like, it. and it's interesting too because like this game does mention like the backstory to how it fits in with one and two at one point, but they treat it in such a trivial way. It's like if you play the other two games, you totally know and understand what they're talking about. If you have it, it's a trivial fact that doesn't really mean anything to your gameplay experience. So, I think they do a really good job of keeping the stories intact. Um, like, they don't spoil the events of either game. Okay. Um, so, all the surprises, all the spoilers that are there are kept intact. Um, and you get to expl- play Xenoblade 3 and you can enjoy it on its own. Or like I said, if you played the other ones, you will be like, oh, this is this and this is this. Um, okay. because this world is made up of locations that are related to previous games mm. and it's made up of characters who are descendants from mm-hmm. previous games and there are a couple characters who still exist from the previous games yes okay so yeah so is that i mean i think the story's really good i've, I've okay. been enjoying it um and just kind of like the the plot twists in this game have nothing to do with the other games at all. Um, and I, I think they did a really good job of doing it. I would compare it to... There's games I would like... Games are like mo- movies or media that I would like be like, oh, this story kind of vaguely reminds me of this and vaguely reminds me of this. But if I even mention them, I think those are greater spoilers than anything else. Um, just because they're plots are so novel that they just kind of it, w- it would home in right on what the actual big twists of the story are so mm. um so but like i said i think i think it's really interesting i think they did something good with it i think they took it in a nice different direction from xenoblade one and two while still keeping it relevant um and making it a game that's not going to spoil the other ones so and that universe thing that i mentioned is not really a spoiler for either of those games either. It's a very trivial fact. So, um, yeah. So that's that. There's something else I was going to say about it. I did. So I did finally. So with the music, I wanted to clarify what I would say about it. The music in this game is all great. There's just not a lot of memorable tracks. Although I did find a memorable track. 
and I love it every time it comes up now. Where is it? I'll put it in general. Because they did. It's the same people that did the soundtrack for 1 and 2. And 1 and 2 just had excellent music. Uh, like, it's just very atmospheric and just very on point. Um, and they do have a couple tracks that, like, like what was it? You know, like, They Will Know Our Names. Uh, Gower Plains are always just, like, so memorable to me from Xenoblade 1. Um, yeah, that's pretty sweet. I like that. I know. It is a really nice, really nice song. It's like my favorite battle theme. And I guess too, and I really just, I didn't really notice it, but I guess like all the battle themes have like multiple stages in them too. Where we'll kind of like escalate the music. Like once you get to like certain points in it as well. Um, it's a lot of fun. So what else did I have to say about Xenoblade 3? It's definitely a fucking lengthy game. Mm-hmm. One of the characters has just <laughs> like such a shit mouth. It's great. Uh, just it surprised me. I was listening to it today, and I just like, I'm like, I cannot believe that Nintendo actually like paid someone to voice act this. <laughs> it was like, what? Well, it was something like you shit feathered ass mouth or something. Um, yeah, and like the one one character refers to another one as the bitch queen all the time. It's it's pretty comical. Like they there's the writing's still on point. I do love the fact that this series uses like not American voice actors. Like, I don't know why. It's just so refreshing to have a game with, like, British voice actors. Mm. I love it. Um, and some Australian, I guess, is in there, too. So you would say that. Um, what else do I have to say about this game? But otherwise, it plays great. I really just don't have any have any complaints. I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to know about it? I mean, I talked about it a lot last week, so I really don't think... This is kind of just, like, touch-ups. Um... But I'm at like 70 hours right now. For the oh, game. wow. Yeah. And from oh, yeah. what I hear, going from here to the end, it's like another two hours. But there's a bunch of side quests I still want to go through. But here's now, I'm not really like the explorer type. There's tons to explore on these maps. They're like massive. Um, but the side story stuff, because you can like level up your classes. And how do I put this? There's like a point where they level up to when you get them originally, and then they just quests that you can go on that can make them level up past their original cap. And those are usually, like, pretty, like, significant like story quests. Um, and most of them are optional. But they've been a lot of fun. So I've been trying to go through and at least get all those. There's this whole colony element, too, which I don't really thought... Oh, I remember there was one more other thing I was going to say, too. Uh, but there is this whole colony element uh, where, like, you unlock these different colonies and they, like, interact with each other. And as you do quests, you get affinity at diff- different colonies. Um, so that's that's an interesting element. But the one thing I was going to say to Brandon specifically was that, and I don't know how I missed this last week when I talked about it, because you have the two warring factions. You have Kevis and Agnes. Yeah? Yeah. So I didn't realize this originally, but it makes a lot of sense once I thought about it. But the Kevis soldiers, they're all like Xenoblade 1 people. And the Agnes soldiers are all like Xenoblade 2 people. Okay, okay. Not, like, specifically, like, people from those games, but, like, races or classes that okay. are from those games. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so it's, like, you know, like, you would have... The big thing in Xenoblade 2 is, like, those blades that you can get, those gacha blades. And, like, a lot of the the soldiers on Agnes' side are, like, obviously they're blade-type soldiers. And in Xenoblade 1, you had, like, the Hyantia with, like, the little wings on their head. Or you had the, um, I'm trying to think of like another like very common type that's there. Uh, I guess the Nopon were on both sides, but I mean the High Anti are a good example. I mean they, those are like the characters that you would see in in Xenoblade One, so they're on they're on the Kevis side of things. So now again, not super important to the story or to anyone, but if you played the other Xenoblade games, like that's just kind of like a cool thing to realize. Be like, okay. oh okay, I can see. Like I said, these factions are... This game is a direct sequel to Xenoblade 1 and 2. And it's you can't really talk about why they're coming together. Because that is a spoiler. But I, don't know. I, don't know. I guess I like the way that they, they found a way to take these two separate universes and merge them together and turn it into a story that doesn't just sound like something that was drudged up from Kingdom Hearts. So, more or less. So yeah, that's it. I don't know, do you guys have any questions about Xenoblade 3 otherwise? Mm, not particularly. Okay. No. 
Yeah, I, I'm not planning on talking about it last, unless something like insane happens in the ending. I don't think I'll have anything extra to like share on the game next week. Um, the only thing I'll say with this game too, and and I because I keep on like waning on like the season pass, but like the season pass, I don't know. I don't remember how it was for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But this game in particular just looks like it has the dumbest season pass. And it just, I don't know. It's one of those ones, like, I'll get it eventually, like, when they put out, like, the, the significant, like, DLC chunk. Because I imagine it'll probably be something like Torna, like that um, Torna game that they put out for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which was basically its own standalone game. Excellent. That's fine. But, like, the one, like, the first, I don't understand why they do this with, like, season passes, but, like, the first pack is, like, Here's some costumes and some expendable in-game items. Like, okay, that doesn't entice me to buy this. And the stuff that's more interesting isn't out until later. And, well, I come back and play this game again in six months to be like, oh, I can get a new unlockable character. Yoo-hoo. Like, I already beat the game, unless I'm going back to play it again. Which I'm sure I will at some point, because I do like going back through and playing games again. But it just kind of, I don't know. I just don't really see the the um what's the word i'm looking for the the value there right away like it just is just doesn't really sell it right away off the bat i don't know um but that is definitively all i have for xenoblade right now so you guys ready to move on to news yeah sure all right yeah so i do have one news tidbit because it's more of like a rumor so i didn't put it down here in the news section so i'll just launch off with it uh but as it's i called it one of those uh but apparently in multiverses there's lines <laughs> for beetlejuice yeah know. so there is yep i remember they just released black adam and, and the uh spike i think is his name the evil gremlin yeah like from gremlins yeah like from gremlins oh that's awesome yeah yeah see that's a lot of fun i like that i will probably have to download this game it's a fun game. Stripe. Stripe is yeah. his name. My bad. I, mean, I have, a lot, I have a lot of fun with it, usually. I mean, I'm just excited. Like, they, I don't know. It just... They, they have enough, like, just random shit. Wicked Witch is the on. other um, data mind character. Oh, yeah. I think the Wicked Witch of the West will How be... How could you not? Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, that... they got a lot of good stuff they can work with. Yeah. I mean, they really do. Mm-hmm. Honestly, cool. it's been a lot of fun every time I've played it, so... Yeah, mm-hmm. highly recommend it. And like, it it's e- really easy to earn characters, and they have free rotation of I think two to four characters a week. So, I also believe if you play it offline, the full roster is available to use. Is it? Oh, I really? don't know that. Yeah. So like, if you bring people over and they're like, "Hey, can we play that new game?" Like, "Yep," and you play it offline, you can use anybody. That's pretty awesome. I didn't even think it could boot if it was offline. Interesting. Yep. Um, yeah, so there's that. And just other random news bits I put in here, too. Uh, Wave Race 64 is out this week. You have the... Oh, yeah, that is out this week, yeah. Switch Online. Yep. Which is always a good one. I always like that one. The one I want, which I'm surprised, like, I don't think it's ever had a virtual console release, is Pilot Wings. I'm surprised that, that one's been... Oh. Like, launch titles for the 64 that have never seen the light of day again. Uh, I love Pilot well, Wings. I love Pilot Wings too. The and the Super Nintendo one is actually, you know, I never talked about this. Did you guys mm-hmm. ever play like really anything of the Super Nintendo Pilot Wings? No, yeah, I, I played it. Not. I played it somewhat. How far did you get? I I literally could not tell you. Did you? Get I remember the... it being difficult though. Yeah. So okay. So let me just talk, because this just boggled my mind when it happened. Mm-hmm. So you played through Pilot Wings, and it reminded me a lot of Pilot Wings sixty four, where it's like. You know, you're going through, you're just doing, like, these random, like, land a plane and, you know, fuck around with this parachute or whatever, you know? Just trying to, like, do these little flying tests or whatever. And so I go through, like, a couple missions like that, and then all of a sudden it's like, your traitors have been kidnapped! Rescue them! And then, like, it puts you on, like, a helicopter mission where it's, like, the military and they're trying to shoot you down and you have to, like, land and extract them out. I don't remember that. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I did not (laughs) expect this. Like, this got dark real fast. Like, I was not... I thought this was just, like, a fun fuck around, like, flying game. No. No. Oh, no. Oh, no, yeah. I couldn't remember. imagine that happening on, like, Pilot Wings Resort. So it's like you're flying around Woohoo Island, and all of a sudden, like, 
I don't know, Iran shows up with nuclear weapons and she's like, <laughs> bail, bail. Yeah, but uh, anyways, Wave Race 64, great time. Good water physics. And I don't know, it's still, I think that one holds up pretty well still. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing I put in here, I didn't actually watch the direct. I just saw like the snippets of it, but Splatoon 3 had a direct this week. Oh, yeah, but, I forgot about that. that I didn't watch it at all. Yeah. I mean, my, my two highlights were, well, maybe three highlights. Salmon Run is coming back. Mm. And you can, well, Salmon Run, we knew it was coming back. But I guess mm-hmm. it's not in like the rotations like it was before. Like it's just, it's always available. So that's mm. kind of cool. Um, the Amiibo are pretty awesome looking. It has like a, a Splatoon, um, sorry, an Inkling, an Octoling, and I forget what the Kelp's called or whatever it is. But yeah, you get one of those too. That's kind of cool. Mm. Uh, so that's nice. No fucking clue what they do. But the real big deal of this is the new, like the new band. Did you guys see what the new band is? I did not. Mm-mm. It's got a giant fucking dancing manta ray. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And it's fucking awesome. Let me see. I love that. It's, uh, it's Splatoon 3. Um, I guess it's called Seaside is what Google says. Let me see if I can find the image of them. Where is there is the manta ray? Oh, there he is. Big man. I'm guessing this is probably just a fan image, but I don't care. I'm just going to copy it um, and put it in the thing so you guys can see it. Yeah. There oh, I love him. Yeah. He's fucking amazing. So oh, he wow. just like dances around on the stage up there. Yeah. It's excellent. Oh, and I guess the other thing with that too is like with the, um, it has to do with how they break down the, Flat fast. Because I guess there's like a more complex like grading system now. Like you get points based on like how many people pick which side. You get points on which team performs better. And I guess, and I don't really understand the logistics and maybe it'll make sense. Oh, I, when the thing comes out, when the demo, because there's a demo in two weeks-ish. Yeah, where you actually get to play a Splatfest. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, and so they, there's like a three-way Splatfest thing too. Where it's like try try teams i don't know don't know how it works um or that's just how it regularly is not sure but uh it looks like it could be a lot of fun so everyone will get to try that out for free uh i think it's the 28th uh demo is on oh why does it just pop up i hate it when it does this august 27th so yeah i'll just double check I know it goes from like 9A Pacific time to 9P Pacific time. So you get a good amount of time to like play it. Um, and if you don't, it does require like the Nintendo Switch online. But if you don't have it, it does. You can get a free seven day trial with it, even if you had it before. So, yeah, that's all I got with Splatoon 3. I don't think there's anything else exciting. It looks great. Like I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, I really hope we get Amiibo for like the new band. I really want like a, a big man Amiibo. Like, we got all like the other... gigantic one of just him. Oh, yeah. I hope it's big like the, the Detective Pikachu one. Like, just massive. Yes. And then, like, the other one should just be, like, extra small Amiibo, just to, like, spite them. Um, but yeah, that's it. You guys talk about the other new stuff you got? Yeah. I don't think I, I have anything written here. Do you? I, I put two things in. Okay. Uh, yeah. First one being, on September 9th, there's going to be a joint Disney and Marvel game showcase. Um, according to Disney, new reveals for Marvel's Midnight Suns, like a Star Wars Skywalker saga, as well as first look at Skydance New Media's Marvel game. Um, so it's going to take place nine September 9th, 1 p.m. PT, 4 p.m. our time. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a large amount of cope being held from people who are fans of Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, yeah, that ain't happening. Like that, yeah, that's not that that gonna happen. Especially with Capcom making Street Fighter Six right now, that's definitely not happening. Um, not only that, but since when would Disney give a shit? No, nah. about a fighting game, they wouldn't. So, uh, there's that. Um, I, we're gonna get it. Like I said, an update on Midnight Suns. Um, which, if you remember correctly, it just got delayed, right? It just got delayed, basically indefinitely. Yep. So, like, there's no actual date of release for that. Cool. So, 
I don't know what they're going to show. I feel like they've shown off a decent amount so far. Um, but apparently they got more to show. Maybe an actual release date. Maybe not. Maybe they're just like, eh, it's only coming out to next gen. I don't know if that was already the case or not. I'm just saying things. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah. So, look out for that. That's in, like, was it two weeks? Three weeks? September One, two. September. Yeah, about two and a half weeks from today. Um, it's on a Friday. Uh, otherwise, the only other news I had is that uh, the Pokemon Happy Meals are coming back to McDonald's. Um, if you remember correctly, I think it was about a year ago now that that happened. And you uh, rolled up Pokemon here. Happy Meals? Yeah. yeah, I think that was about a year. Yeah. So, basically, you would pull up and be like, listen, I don't know, I'm an adult man. You know what I'm here for. And they give you the Pikachu Happy Meal. Um, so this time around, it's the same kind of thing with some added goodies. You're going to get a Ford car, four card booster. Each pack contains one foil card. Um, you can find, I'm not sure if this is in all of them, but it's, it's definitely ones that they list on the Pokemon website. Uh, Pikachu, Rowlet, Gossifleur, and more. So do with that what you will. One instruction sheet, one coin, one spinner, one card box. I don't have actually a picture of that. I wish I did. Um, unless the Happy Meal box is the card box. I don't know. Uh, I also don't know... Can I open this image for the spinner to get bigger? Hold on. Enhance. Enhance. Where's my fucking... I don't know where my plus key is on this fucking keyboard. Let me just use the one that's built into a browser. Uh, looks like the spinner is for, like, status effects. So, um... This was a pretty cool thing they did before. I don't think anything of value came from those. I think it's more so just like the um, the uh, novelty of it all. Uh, mostly because like I've seen these cards out in the wild now. Um, I saw there was a Scrafty actually this past weekend when I was at the convention. And I believe he was like a dollar. Like he wasn't at. Like he just had the McDonald's logo on him. But like other than that, it's just the same Scrafty you would get. So chances are whatever you're going to get from these packs are just like a regular Pikachu, just with the McDonald's Golden Arches on the artwork. Um, whether they're worth any money in the future, maybe. I don't know. People tend to like really overprice a lot of Pokemon stuff. So like it could be artificially um, inflated as most things go with this uh, with this stuff. What? <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's funny. Just going back to that real quick. At the con, right, there were some other McDonald's, like, I don't know if they were McDonald's or Burger King toys, whichever they were. The one was the Pokeball with the golden plate of, like, the Pokemon Frozen and Carbonite, basically, but it was gold. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was, like, the plastic Pokeball that I think came with a little, like, stuffed version of a Pokemon that, like, could, like, carabiner clip onto, like, a backpack. I believe that one was from KFC. I remember KFC having Pokemon toys at some point. And I'm also probably dating myself because I don't think KFC gives out kids meals with toys anymore. Um, but regardless of that, they were selling them for like 20 bucks a pop, 25 bucks a pop. I'm like, this is a free thing I got in a fucking Burger King meal. Dude, some of those McDonald's toys from way back when, like with the Disney ones, those things are worth like, 30 40 bucks oh it's ridiculous so if if you're the kind of person that just likes to collect <laughs> different variations of pokemon cards um this is your time but i'll be going i'm probably gonna um get two kids meals and you know eat the nuggets or whatever i don't know i don't really go to mcdonald's that often and whenever i do it makes me violently sick <laughs> So we'll see. At least the burgers do. The nuggets didn't before. I wish I would have known about it because I got a McDonald's today. Yeah. The the burgers uh just really ping pong around in my stomach. I just eat the nuggets and I'm like, all right, yeah. that's cool. I do have a soft spot for their cheeseburgers. Not that I eat them that often. Oh uh, if I'm if I'm going for cheap meat, cheap burger <laughs> meat between <laughs> buns, I'm Wendy's four for four every time. Wendy's is just better. The four for four. Can't go wrong. I'd just rather eat Wendy's. Get nuggets. Get a burger. Get a Wendy's. Get a Wendy's. You know, you get, <laughs> actually, if you want, sub the drink out, get a little frosty. You got the Wendy's trifecta. 
This doesn't sound weird, but the only fast food burger that I like is McDonald's. What the fuck? I know. That is I weird. know it's I know it's not the best like quality one, like by yeah. far. Yeah. It's just there's something about the taste. It's just it's timeless to me. Well, I just I like how it tastes. And I don't know, I've never been like a big like juicy burger person. Like I just straight like normal McDonald's cheeseburger. Not even like I don't like the Big Macs, like nothing fancy, just I mean that's fine. There are there are times when like you can just like something that's just pure crud. Like I know Taco Bell is horrible for me. Yeah. But if you think that there will never be a day where I will say yes to a crunch wrap supreme, <laughs> got nothing coming. It's happening. But uh but yeah, so those are starting today. What I would probably do if I were you, give it a week. Um from what I have experienced from in the past with like promotions such as these, it usually takes a lot of the places, unless it's like a more, maybe more busy McDonald's, um, usually takes stores like these about a week or two to kind of get their supplies in. Uh, so give it a little bit. And also don't like fight the McDonald's employees if you don't get your fucking Pokemon Happy Meal. They're just trying to get their McMoney. Don't get McMet. Yeah. But so. those are the only two pieces of news that I had found found that i was excited for anyway yeah i haven't seen anything else is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap up um i don't believe so okay well then thank you everyone for listening to us tonight don't forget you can find us on itunes stitcher google amazon or wherever you guys get your podcasts we also have the website game-crunch.com if you want to reach out to us you can find us on twitter facebook or you can send us email at gamecrunchcast at gmail.com Brandon, hey. any final thoughts? Yes. Um, as you may have already seen, my dog is uh, hurt right now, and we're trying to raise some money for her uh, in order to be able to get her surgery. Uh, there's a GoFundMe that's already been shared by the main page, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. Um, I've also shared it on my personal Facebook as well. And it would mean a lot if anyone could share it around or, if possible, help out some. Um, we're, we've, made, we've made a little bit uh, already. Um, some of the money that we have made so far, I'm going to go ahead and share this information. Uh, after talking with the vet, she does need to get down in weight before the surgery can take place. Um, and there is a prescription dog food that they have her being put on. So some of the money that we have made will go towards the first purchase of that prescription dog food, just so we could start getting the ball rolling on getting her into surgery and getting everything taken care of. If you cannot or don't want to do anything to help via donations, um, I also have a eBay that I'll be putting up multiple things via comic books, Funko Pops, electronics over the next few weeks to months. Uh, that you can purchase for me and help out that way if you would like. I already have a few things up there. I have a Oculus Rift S um, that's up there for 230 I have uh, several different Funko Pops up there for fairly cheap. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, you can message me directly. I'm going to get Mike the link to the eBay, if that's okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And and he can share that on the main page as well. So thank you all. I'm really fucked up right now because I have COVID. So I'm very sorry if I've sounded completely out of it today. I will probably sound this way for at least like another week or so. But uh, anything you guys can do to help would be it would mean the world to me and my family. So thank you very much. Yeah. Hope if you can. Um, I lost my train of thought. Where was I? You were Maybe closing. Your turn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got quite literally nothing. Um, I'm not doing anything exciting. But uh, look, look forward to hearing about the Kirby Dream Buffet next week because I'll be talking about the Hungry Boy. Yeah, my purchase will be entirely based on you, Nick. Oh shit! It's on your shoulders. Uh, Kibi's in it. Who? Kibi. Kibi? The yellow version of Kirby? Oh, why is it Kibi? That's just his name. Oh. I didn't name him. Well, Kibi. <laughs> All right. Well, then.
That said, my name is Mike Anastasia. You can find me online on Clash of Penguin on Twitter, your favorite gaming console. And until next week, game on. Games. Games. So I just want to say, so I did Google like uh-huh. KFC kids meal and it pops right up on Google. It's like kids meals, KFC.com. And you click on it. And it's like, this page does not exist. <laughs> yeah, no, I figured they uh, probably haven't had kids meals in like a hot second. I mean, it's just so healthy. I don't know why. 1998 they KFC prof- 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 promotional Pokemon kids meal. Truthfully. My parents should not have been bringing me to KFC at the ripe age of like, or even like younger than that. <laughs> like, realistically, I should not have been having the the kernel. But here we are. AFC Pokemon Kids Meals, nineteen ninety eight. Oh yeah. So then I was, you know what? Thinking about it, I definitely did it. It was probably for the Pokemon two thousand movie, which would oh, have made, sense. which would have made me twenty fourteen Pokemon Kids Meals. From you KFC. Know, I was, I was oh, seven these are years Japanese. Old. These are Japanese. They had Japanese kids' meals of Pokemon. Let me see KFC Pokemon Seal Toy. Uh, that's the exact one. This is cool. That I had. <clears throat> uh, nineteen ninety eight. So the yep, plush I that said. I had from from KFC was the Seal one from nineteen ninety eight. So your boy. Was maybe six eating fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, that sounds about right. I Perfect mean, time. Was healthier in 1998. Oh, I yeah, definitely with the health standards that they took away. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And here's the yeah. other problem too. What you gotta remember is I didn't just have one of these toys. I had like all of them. <laughs> there was yeah. a multiple visits to the Colonel for uh, for these toys. I mean, it is delicious. I do love KFC. I will say, to this day, I will throw down KFC mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, KFC is so KFC good. I had cheese. some yesterday. It, it has no reason. Why? Why do they go so hard in the mac? I don't know, but they did. Well, not the ma- their mashed potatoes are timeless, I think. Yeah, honestly, when they brought the bowls out, I was like, smart. I just dump it all in the fucking mashed potatoes anyway. Like, it just, <laughs> just makes, makes sense.